Question 11, it says write an exponential curve in the form y equals ab to the x power that goes through the points 2, 1, 6, and 4, 2 thirds. So we're given these two points, and each one of those points has their own x value and their own y value. Um, I'll color code that one, and then here's our x value and our y value. And because we're told that this is an exponential curve, right, we're writing an equation in the form y equals a times b to the x power. So the thing that we've done in class is we've looked at, hey, let's write two forms of this equation, one for uh, the first point and one for the second, and then that'll allow us to solve for our parameters a and b. Once we know a and b and we've locked them in place, basically we then have a description of that curve. So take a look at this. Um, I'm going to write that y, uh, which is 1 6 for my blue points up there, uh, is equal to a, b, and my value of x is 2. Not So I'm going to write an exponent of 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the point that I've written in green there. So y for that point is 2 thirds, so I write 2 thirds equals, and then a, b, in this case it's to the fourth power. So our strategy has been to isolate a in one of these equations and then use that as a valid substitution into the second equation. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to isolate this a and it's pretty straightforward to do that, right? If I want to get that a alone, I can divide both sides by b squared. So I'm going to just write 1 over 6b squared, and that equals a. So you can see I've divided both the left and the right-hand side by b squared. On the right-hand side, I lost the two factors of b that were up there. And on the right left-hand side, I placed two factors of b down in the denominator. Now, it turns out that that is a valid substitution for a, so I'm going to now take this value of a and place it into the other equation. <clears throat> and when I do that, I end up getting um, the following. I end up getting, and I'll write this with black ink now, I end up getting uh, two-thirds. Uh, equals 1 over 6b squared times b to the fourth. And I'll write that b as b to the fourth over 1. So if I'm looking at this, I've got the 2 thirds on the right hand side. On the left hand side, I've got b to the fourth over b squared. And b to the fourth over b squared is just b squared. So I've got b squared over 6. Uh, not sure what I'm doing. Take a look closely, right? There's b to the fourth in this numerator and b squared in the denominator. And when I simplify that, that ends up with just a b squared in the numerator. So that's what's, what's right here. Um, I'm going to simplify this a step further by multiplying both sides by 6. Um, and when I do that, over on the left-hand side, I end up with just plain old b squared. On the right-hand side, I have 2 times 6 over 3, which looks like 12 over 3, which looks like the number 4. So I've got that, I love it, 4 is the same thing as b squared or b squared is 4. Um, in this case, we're just going to look at this positive root. There's two solutions there. We're just going to look at the, the positive root, and we're going to write down that, hey, b is the number, uh, the square root of 4 is 2. What's beautiful about that is I know now one of my two parameters, right? I know specifically what b is. Um, all I need to do now is figure out a, and I can write the equation uh, of this exponential um, curve here. So what is a? Well, it turns out we have a very nice way of finding a right here. Uh, it's telling me that a is simply equal to 1 divided by 6 times b squared. So we're just going to take this valid value of b and plug it into that expression that equals a, and we get the following. We're going to get that 1 over uh, 6 times 2 squared Right, that's what b was, b was 2, is equal to a. Uh, 2 squared is 4, so I have 1 over 6 times 4, which is 1 over 24. So uh, a is interesting. It's, it's not, I guess it's not, it's not what we're used to seeing, but it's 1 24th. 
That means that the answer to this question is y is equal to 1 24th, that's my value of a, times b, which is uh, 2, and then raised to the x power. So there you see it perfectly, right? y equals 1 24th times 2 to the x power. Uh, question 12, there are two problems here, part A, part B, and I'm going to do them on separate slides, so I've got the entire screen to do these. In fact, I'm going to, I don't know why I made this other one larger, but there's one of them, and here's the other one that I'll do on the next screen. So um, it's an absolute value inequality, and the first thing that I see here is that I've got the absolute value of something is greater than 24, or as I say in class, greater than 24. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous, and I'm sorry, but I have an absolute value is greater than something. So I know that there's going to be two parts of this, and it's going to be joined by or. And how I typically write this is I will keep the inside part, 5x plus 7, um, I will flip the direction of my inequality and I'll take the opposite of the 22. Um, the thinking here is the 5x plus 7 is either positive uh, 22 or negative 22. If it's negative 22, I have to switch the direction of my inequality. So that's, that's the first part. The other part is everything stays the same or 5x plus 7 is greater than the number 22. So these, this is basically it's greater, and then you can see um, I, it's it's keep, flip, and then the opposite sign. And on the other side, it's keep it the same, keep it the same, keep it the same. So if you look at it, this is how I eliminate absolute value um, so with an inequality so that I can figure out what's going on here. Now for each side of this, I'm going to begin by adding 7. Uh, for this part, if I add 7, that, that gives me 5x is less than. And negative 22 uh, plus 7, what is that? It's uh, negative 22. Um, oh, actually, no, I need to subtract 7 from both sides, don't I? Because I've got a positive 7, so I'm taking away 7 from each side. Negative 22 minus 7 is a negative 29, which isn't pretty. Uh, if I divide both sides by 5, I get that x is less than negative 29 fifths. And that number, 29 fifths, is it's um, it's 5, I think it's 5.8, so it's almost 6. Um, I could also write it as, um, I could say x is less than negative 5 and 4 fifths. So it's almost the number 6, or almost negative 6. Um, now, that, that's one of our boundary points, and I could put this open circle about here, right? And notice it is an open circle. Um, and it does say that my x values are less than that. So the direction that I would be shading would be everything below that value, right? So it would go this direction um, with this open circle. Now the other half of that, if I subtract 7 from negative 22, I end up getting that 5x is greater than 15. Dividing by 5, we get that x is greater than 3. That's, again, it's an open dot here at 3, an open boundary point, and it's everything to the right. And there we go. So that's the answer to uh, the, the part A. We would say, and I'll write it down here too, we would say x is less than negative 5 and 4 fifths or x is greater than 3. It's one of those two locations. It's either over here that points that work uh, or over here points that work. And any points in between these, including the endpoints, do not satisfy the inequality. So for the second half of this, um, we already did part A, so let's look at part B. Um, it is uh, the absolute value of 3x plus 6 is less than, less than or equal to 27, less than, than, and, I don't know. It's pretty pathetic. So I'm going to go ahead and I know that there's two parts, and it's going to be joined by the word and. Over on the other one, it was greater. Now it's less than. And I think and when I hear less than, uh, and I don't really talk like that normally. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to um, go ahead and keep the inside part, 3x plus 7. 
plus 6. And then I'm going to flip the direction of the inequality because this is the one that's the opposite. And then over here I'm going to write it as the same. And this direction stays the same, is, great, is less than or equal to, and it's a 27. So over here we're going to begin by um, subtracting 6 from each side. If I subtract 6 um, from both sides of this, I end up getting that 3x is greater than or equal to negative 33. Um, and over here, if I subtract 6, I have 3x is less than or equal to 21. Now we divide by 3. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 11. And over here, x's must be less than or equal to the number 7. So there's our boundary points. Um, we're at negative 11, and I'll put a, a solid dot at negative 11 because it includes the or equals to. So negative 11. And it's everything greater than that and... It also has to be true that it's less than 7. So if I'm starting here at the negative 11, it's, it's bigger than that, bigger than that. These are all good points. These are all good points. And it keeps going with the, all of these uh, points included until I get to here, and then I have to stop, right? Any points that satisfies both of those would live in that region between negative 11 and positive 7. Uh, all of these points will bring... Um, harmony and happiness and these points will not satisfy both of the inequalities and that's the thing we're looking for things that solve both so our solution is this and also that we include the graph there and the final question asks us to take triangle abc and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise so we're going to be starting here and going this direction through 90 degrees about the origin um, and we're going to produce a new triangle called triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, I, I've, I've tracked this a lot, and I know that there is a nice rule for handling um, these rotations of 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. There's a mapping that I can use. Um, I do recommend that you continue to look at these, try to figure out those rules, but feel free to use patty paper, and I will always have some available uh, in the class or during testing sessions. Um, so we're going 90 degrees counterclockwise, and basically what happens is this point uh, C is going to get mapped to, um, I think it get maps to negative one, and then, uh, hmm, negative one, and then ooh. Yeah, down to 4. So negative 1 and then down 4. So this is where C goes. I'm going to label this point C prime. Um, and I can see what happens here. Um, the X's and Y's uh, changed places. And also the sign of the Y value. Y was positive and, and now um, it flipped. In fact, let me write down the rule here. This is not something I expect you to know, but it's kind of helpful to look at when I, I don't have patty paper and I can't show you the patty paper right now, but um, XY is getting mapped to the point, the opposite of Y, the opposite of Y comma X. So what I want to do is if I, if I know what my Y value is, I'm going to take the opposite of that and that's going to become my Y value. Um, and uh, X is going to my what was x is just going to become uh, my y value so the y value is going to migrate to where x was and the x is going to migrate to the y and the sign of the y part is going to have to change so if you look at point b you can see point b is the point currently it's at x is negative 10 and y is at 3. so this mapping says look here's where they're going to go um, what was y is going to become the opposite, and it's going to move to where x is. And what is uh, x is going to go to where the y was. So this is going to become a negative 10. So if I want to plot that point, it is at, uh, I mean, it's at negative 3 and then down to negative 10. So this point right here is where b prime is going to go. The last point I have a same thing, right? I'm just going to take this um, negative 7 and it's up 9. I'm going to go back 9 and then I'm going to go down 7. And I end up at this point right here. This point is uh, negative 9, negative 7. And this is where A prime goes. So 
this is pretty easy to see if you've got a piece of patty paper and you you trace it um, and then you rotate about the origin by just holding holding your pen down at the origin and rotating 90 degrees it also helps when you're doing that to mark off you know where your x and y axes are so you can see as you rotate uh, where things end up so what we have here um, let's see a uh, is going to end up at you can just read the coordinates now a is ending up at negative 9 negative 7 b ends up at negative 3 negative 10 and c ends up at negative 1 negative 4.